So that's the basics, essentially, of turbulent flow. Now, there, is, there are three types of problems with turbulent flow. Okay? We have type 1, type 2, and type 3. Okay? And all the problems in your tutorial sheet and the exercises will be one of these types of problems. Okay? Now, there's a method to go through to solve these problems. Type 1 is very simple. It's just determining the pressure drop using our equation. Okay? You're generally given the flow rate and the diameter. And you know if you've got flow rate, V dot, and the diameter, you can work out V of velocity, which is C. Okay? V dot equals AC. Don't forget that. That was, last, that was the second lecture we had. We covered that. V dot equals AC. And you know everything that we need to find out the pressure drop. Okay, so that's relatively simple. We just use the, the equation that, you, uh, that we talked about. Type 2, okay, is where you've been given the flow rate. Where you've got, sorry, you've got to determine the flow rate. You're given the pressure drop and the diameter, but you're not given the velocity. And so we can't find the Reynolds number. Okay, so there's a process you've got to go through to work out what your friction factor is, although you've not got your Reynolds number. And we'll go through that. Type 3 is where you've got to work out your pipe diameter. You're given the pressure drop, you're given the flow rate, but you don't know the D. So you, not only can you not work out your Reynolds number, okay, but you also can't work out your relative roughness. So you've got no idea what the friction factor could be. So, type 1 problems. Okay, you're given the diameter. So the first thing to do is to work out your Reynolds number and your relative roughness, and that will give you your friction factor from the Moody chart. You then use your standard equation that we've seen, okay? We now know F. You should have L and D, and you should have rho t squared. Sometimes you, you'll have to convert V dot to, to become C, okay? Which we all know V dot equals A times C, okay? And you'll end up working out the pressure drop. That's all very simple. Type 2 problems, okay, you're given the pressure drop and the pipe diameter, okay? Now, you need to find the flow rate, okay? And we know that V dot equals A times C, okay? But we don't have C, okay? Because flow rate is a function of the, uh, of the velocity. So we can't determine what the Reynolds number is. Reynolds number is rho CD upon mu. If you don't have C, you can't work out what our Reynolds number is. And so what we do is we make an assumption that we're dealing with fully turbulent flow. Now, you'll remember from the Moody diagram, which I have on the back down here, that if we're dealing with fully turbulent flow, we don't need to worry about what the Reynolds number is, okay? Fully turbulent flow is anything to the right-hand side of that dotted line. I'll go back to the, uh, to the picture. Let's, uh... So if we've... Uh... Anything to the right of that, side, that line okay, is independent of Reynolds number. So what you do is, since we don't have this value, you make the assumption that we're dealing in this region. Okay? So you make the assumption that you're dealing with fully, fully turbulent flow. Okay? You, you've got the diameter, so you can work out what your relative roughness is, but we can't work out what the Reynolds number is. So you then, basically, you assume we're dealing with fully turbulent flow. And then you check the answer. You go back. Okay? And so that means that there's some iteration sometimes necessary, okay? So the flow chart to go through is we've given these two things, the pressure drop and the diameter. You calculate the relative roughness is the first step, okay? You make the assumption that you're dealing with fully turbulent flow. And by making that assumption, we can determine what your friction factor is, okay? And you can then calculate what C is, okay? Which is, like, you know, once, once you've got this, you'll have an equation that looks a bit like this. That's basically this equation, which is the rearrangement of this equation. Because we know delta P, and we know the diameter, and we now know the friction factor, you can work out what the C is. And from that, you can then determine whether you've got a Reynolds number, and what your Reynolds number is. <coughs> and from there, you can then make a judgment about whether that, whether that assumption was correct. Obviously, if your Reynolds number is such that your friction factor is now with the other side of the dotted line, your assumption was incorrect. And so what you do is you then determine a new value for the friction factor, which then allows you to calculate another value for C, which then allows you to determine another value for the Reynolds number, and you keep going around this loop until C doesn't vary very significantly. Okay? 
And once it stops varying significantly, then use that value for C to get the flow rate, okay, using V dot equals AC. Now, a type 3 problem is a bit more challenging. You've got delta P and you've got V dot, okay? And we need to find the diameter. Well, since we don't have the diameter, you, not only can you not work out the Reynolds number, okay, you can't work out the relative roughness. And so we just assume that F, the friction factor, is 0 0.03, which is a more or less slap bang in the middle of the um, Moody chart, Moody diagram, okay? And so what you do is, again, you check the solution and iterate if necessary. And again, we've got another flow chart here. This is a bit simpler. You basically, you guess your friction factor. You then calculate D using this equation. So again, what we've done here, FL upon D times one half rho c squared. Well, if we replace rho c squared with V dot, okay, or integrate V dot into that equation, we end up with this equation. Rearranging solving for D, obviously that's the fifth root of FL upon delta P times eight rho V dot squared over pi squared. Okay, again, that's just rearranging our standard equation, okay? It's not difficult. So you calculate D, you calculate Reynolds number and relative roughness from that value there, and from those you can then determine a new value for F. And you keep going around this until D doesn't vary significantly again. So that's the process for the type 3 problem. <coughs> 